Aronson, The Social Animal Mass Communication, Propaganda, and Persuasion Television shows like Roots can shape public understanding of historical events. They foster pride in heritage and cultural identity. The day after, a TV movie on a nuclear attack had a major impact on public attitudes towards war and nuclear weapons. It influenced public views on peace and national security. Media coverage of violent events, like the Rodney King beating, can influence public perceptions of law enforcement and social justice. It raises ethical concerns about media coverage of traumatic events. News media's selective coverage of violent events can skew public perception and attitudes towards violence, crime prevention, and law enforcement. It has implications for the public's understanding of crime prevention. Media coverage can trigger emotional contagion and copycat behaviors, like in suicide cases. Responsible reporting strategies can minimize negative impacts on the audience. Effectiveness of media appeals Children are particularly susceptible to persuasive commercials. Over 90% of preschoolers request products they see advertised on TV. As we age, we may become more skeptical towards commercials, but familiarity with products due to advertising still plays a substantial role in consumer choices. The power of media appeals also extends to political campaigns. Candidates who spend more on TV commercials tend to receive more votes. Emotional issues can significantly influence public opinion. The infamous Willie Horton ad is an example of this. In contrast, relying solely on facts and figures may not be effective when voters are scared or angry. Emotions play a crucial role in shaping attitudes and decisions. Education or propaganda Propaganda can be misleading, like aspirin commercials. However, presenting a presidential candidate in a favorable light can be educational. Distinguishing between education and propaganda is challenging. Media depictions of women, minorities, and historical events can blur the lines. Even seemingly objective subjects, like arithmetic, can contain propaganda. They can reflect and endorse societal norms and systems. Perceptions of education or propaganda often depend on values and beliefs. Persuasion is a prevalent reality that needs to be understood through analysis and examination of experimental literature. The two major routes to persuasion. The central route involves careful consideration of arguments and relevant facts. This leads to a systematic decision-making process. The peripheral route, on the other hand, involves responding to simple cues or superficial aspects of the argument. Most persuasive appeals contain elements targeting both routes to persuasion. Political campaigns and advertisements often employ both routes to persuasion. They use persuasive language, phrasing, and cues to influence public opinion. Words and phrases can be chosen strategically to evoke specific emotions or create a positive or negative impression. Factors such as the source of communication, the content of the message, and the characteristics of the audience play crucial roles in determining the effectiveness of persuasive communication. The source of the communication. The credibility and trustworthiness of a communicator play a significant role in persuasion. People are more likely to be persuaded by individuals they find credible and trustworthy. In fact, when a communicator argues against their self-interest, they appear more sincere and, in turn, more persuasive. The perception of trust can be heightened when the audience believes the communicator has no intention of influencing them directly. But it's not just about credibility and trustworthiness. The attractiveness of the communicator can also positively impact persuasion. People tend to be influenced by individuals they like and identify with. This effect is particularly strong for trivial opinions and behaviors. 
However, when it comes to significant issues, such as political views or moral stances, attractiveness may have less impact on persuasion. The Nature of the Communication Tailoring the message to the audience's knowledge and beliefs enhances persuasiveness. For example, an audience with high knowledge may be swayed by two-sided arguments that address opposing viewpoints. Emotional appeals can be effective, but the distinction between emotional and logical appeals can be challenging. It's important to understand the audience and use emotional appeals appropriately. The impact of fear arousal in communication is context-specific. A moderate level of fear, coupled with specific instructions, is more likely to lead to action than overwhelming fear. The use of vivid examples can be more persuasive than statistical evidence. However, vivid examples can also be misleading if not properly contextualized. The manner of communicating potential threats is critical. Effective warnings should be based on reliable evidence presented by credible sources and provide clear instructions on how to take preventive action. Characteristics of the audience The level of knowledge and prior opinions of the audience plays a role in determining the effectiveness of two-sided versus one-sided communication. According to a study by the University of Michigan, when presenting a message to an audience with high prior knowledge, two-sided communication is more effective. Individuals with low self-esteem are more easily influenced by persuasive communication compared to those with high self-esteem. This is supported by a study by the University of Texas. The frame of mind the audience is in just before receiving a message can affect their receptivity to persuasion. For example, a good mood or positive self-esteem feedback can make people more vulnerable to persuasion. People tend to protect their sense of freedom and blatant or coercive attempts at persuasion can activate defenses to resist the messages. To counteract this resistance, persuaders can use a two-sided refutational presentation or inoculation effect to increase resistance to subsequent counterpropaganda. Prior exposure to a mild attack on beliefs can strengthen resistance to later, more severe attacks on those beliefs. The inoculation effect is particularly effective when challenging cultural truisms, beliefs accepted as unquestionably true in society. To build resistance against propaganda, it is essential to encourage free inquiry and critical examination of ideas of all kinds rather than promoting one-sided perspectives. This is supported by a study by the University of California, Los Angeles.